Cryptocurrency wallet is a piece of software that facilitates transactions on the blockchain. It's got two very important components, public keys and private keys. However, most people don't know that a crypto wallet actually does not store your crypto. It's a very complicated concept, but that's why I'm making this video. This type of content is usually reserved for our Diamond Hustle members, but taking into account recent events, figured this information was better suited to the public. So that's what we're going to be discussing in this video. As always, my name is Wade. You're watching the Digital Hustle Network. We cover cryptocurrency and blockchain content with a real and unbiased perspective. Now, let's jump right into our content. By the way, don't forget to hit that like button for me. The easiest way to explain the process of public and private keys, the two components to a crypto wallet, is to talk about mailing addresses. The same way that people are allowed to send you mail to your house or even an email is because of an address. Your private and public keys are just that, addresses. The public key is the address that everyone can see and the private key is the address that only you can see or only you have access of. When we get to the section of the video where we talk about custodial versus non-custodial, that'll change a bit, but don't worry about that right now. The two main components, whether they're hardware wallets or you're storing crypto on an exchange, the parameters are the same. You're either gonna have a public key or you're gonna have a private key. Some exchanges do make use of both. They provide custody services where you can hold your crypto with them and they give you a private key to access that storage or you just have a public key which gives you access to their private back office of crypto assets that they have stored. So let's start now and get into the differences between custodial and non-custodial. When we're dealing with custodial cryptocurrency wallets, we're talking about the type of wallets where you're not in control of your money. Now, on the surface, that may sound like a bad thing. However, the benefits of using a custodian is that it's a lot easier to get involved with crypto and you don't have to worry about keeping control or keeping your private keys safe. The custodian will handle that for you. Some popular custodians you may be aware of are Coinbase, Binance, used to be FTX, used to be Voyager, used to be Celsius, don't worry, we'll get to non-custodials in a second, but I'm giving you both sides so that way you have the best understanding here. Custodial wallets, you do not have control over your private keys and you don't have control necessarily over the crypto that you purchase. When you buy crypto on an ex custodial exchange, what you're actually buying is a portion of the crypto that that exchange has allocated to that particular chain. So, for example, when you go and look into a project and you check out their Block Explorer, which is a website or a tool that you can use to learn about the on-chain activity of your favorite blockchain. But when you go to these Block Explorers, you will see that with certain tokens, you'll find exchanges that have a large amount of that token. That is for custodial purposes. We just had a situation where FTX crashed and one of the repercussions and one of the results of that was exchanges, centralized exchanges now printing proof of reserves. And what you'll see is exchanges are holding a lot of stable coins, a lot of Tether, a lot of USDC. Uh, Crypto.com has about 20 trillion Shiba Inu tokens, but they do that so that way they can provide custody. So those are the parameters that you're dealing with here. Now, when it comes to, again, the safety and all of those other things, you really wanna make sure that the custodian that you're going with is backed by some verified institutions, okay? The FDIC has not entered crypto yet. The FDIC is the corporation that insures banks and it insures your account at a bank for 250,000. That does not exist in crypto as of yet. However, I think we may be one step closer to it. Point is, when you're dealing with custody, it's easier to use, but you have to keep in mind that you are not in control of your money. If you wanna be in control of your money, 
this is when we get into non-custodial solutions. Now, non-custodial crypto solutions are the epitome of financial freedom in the crypto space. With a non-custodial wallet, the only person that has control over the money is the person who has control over the private keys. In this case, that would be you. So with having full control over your private keys, you can easily move money around without having to wait for withdrawal approvals and you oftentimes save money on transaction fees when you're using a non-custodial wallet. Non-custodial wallets are typically cold storage devices or they're also called hardware wallets, your, your ledger wallets, your treasure wallets, and then of course the EliPal and the SafePal that I have uh, links to down in the description. Those are examples of non-custodial wallets. And then you also have, and this is something that's a little bit newer to the space, but certain blockchain projects are also offering non-custodial wallet applications and services. The key component to non-custodial wallets is that they allow access to the entire DeFi ecosystem. They allow access to Web3 applications. That's why I believe that going forward, especially considering what happened with FTX, non-custodial solutions are going to be very important again another reason why i made this info public is because people need to know what they're getting involved with now there are pros and cons to both custodial and non-custodial wallets of course we mentioned with the custodial wallets you're not in control of your money and you know depending on how important that is to you that may be a deal breaker now when it comes to non-custodial wallets currently the issue is that these aren't very user friendly they do take a bit of technical know-how to uh, get onboarded, get your assets moved back and forth. But fortunately for you, I have a couple of videos on this channel that'll teach you how to do that. However, the biggest thing that you're gonna come across when you're dealing with non-custodial wallets is that interface factor. These devices are still in their infancy. And as things develop and as more blockchains come out with non-custodial solutions, these things will change. Now, we were just talking about blockchain solutions. One of my favorite ones right now is the Hashpack wallet from Hedera Hashgraph, or now currently known as Hedera. This Hashpack wallet, you can download it to your phone, your computer, desktop, tablet, whatever you're using, and all of your information, your private keys, your funds, your HBAR, stays within the device that you download the software to. That gives you ultimate control. And the transaction speeds, are instant literally instant so <laughs> just something to consider all right just something to consider like i said there are pros and cons to both but overall which wallet you decide to go with depends on the type of investor you want to be if you are a big money investor but you got this company over here you're running this organization over here you got kids you got church you got this you got that you might just want to go to a trusted custodian like Prime Trust, or there are a few others that you can look up here in the United States and have them manage your funds for you. That's a, that's one way to look at custodial solutions. They're fund managers. In crypto, they're just not as experienced. So keep that in mind. Non-custodial solutions. Again, like we said, the user interface is still in development. So if you're able to overcome that barrier, then you'll be able to make use of non-custodial wallets and keep full control over your money. So again, it all depends on preference, but I hope that the information in this video helps you make the best informed decision as well as provided value to you as you go forward on your crypto journey. So with that being said, that's all I got for this one. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you have any questions about today's subject, something that I miss, hey, populate that comment section let your voice be heard all right it's the beauty about the internet you can say whatever the heck you want on here and ain't nobody gonna stop you bro but <laughs> with that though don't forget about your dhn crypto journal link to that will be in the description and scan the qr code on the screen right now to pick up one of those non-custodial hardware wallets safe pal pretty good deal link to that will be in the description as well 